Welcome to episode 55 of Between the Pixels for Tuesday, December 11th, 2012. I'm Jared. I'm Devin. I'm Chase. And I'm Travis. And we have a lot of cool stuff to cover today. We're going to talk about some crazy crap going on with Hitman on Facebook and the BGAs, because those were great. Woo! And uh, Plant Side 2 and whatever other games these guys have to talk about. But first, the big news of the week, starting with THQ, their stocks have rise because of the Humble Bundle. The THQ Humble Bundle that we reported on last week has been, by many accounts, a success. To date, to date they've raised over $3 million and still have three days to go. While not all $3 million has gone directly to THQ, and even if it did, that wouldn't be enough to really save THQ, it has helped them out in other ways. For instance, their stock rose 37.96% to $1.61 per share, up from the pre-bundle price of $1.07 per share, but as of this recording, it has actually dropped back down to $1.20 per share. So to put this in perspective, because I'm sure none of that even makes any sense to you, at THQ's highest point in 2007, their, their share price was actually over $36 per share. Now, the highest donation currently sits at $1,605.01, donated by a man known as McJohn, who actually added the one cent increase to beat the donation from the THQ CEO, Brian Farrell, whose entire share actually went to charity. Good luck to love you. that. Love that. Oh, bundle, nice. By the way. So does that mean the CEO didn't even donate to the company? Is that no, he mean? donated uh, $1,600, $1,605 to the chair, uh, directly to charity. But then right, that guy beat him didn't... by one cent just to be that guy. Oh. Right, but he didn't put the comp money back into his own company. He just donated to oh, charity. Oh, no, he didn't put it back into THQ. Right? <laughs> nice. Because nice. they're going down. Really? In hard. Yep. All right, Bioshock Infinite delayed to March 26. Irrational Games Bioshock Infinite won't make its previously scheduled February 26 release date, citing the need for extra time to polish the ambitious first-person shooter. Ken Levine says the game will arrive four weeks later on March 26. Levine announced the delay at an event in Beverly Hills earlier this week saying that Irrational's recently hired executive vice president of development, Rod Ferguson, who left Epic Games this summer, identified a need for extra development time for Infinite shortly after joining the company. February is already a busy month with Fire Emblem, Dead Space 3, Metal Gear Rising. Bioshock Infinite's new release date puts the game up against EA's Army of Two, The Devil's Cartel. Bioshock Infinite is planned for release for Windows PC, 360, and PS3. A uh, video game score has finally been recognized as a potential Grammy Award winner. Now, this is the first actual video game score that has been recognized to be nominated for a Grammy. There was a song before this in video games. This is the first score that is going into the Grammys, and it's obviously going up against uh, many composers <laughs> who do music for movies. But the composer by the name of Austin Wintory... His score for that game company, Sony's Journey game, um, he works for that game company. He uh, is nominated for a Grammy for his score in the in the in the game. I don't think it says anything else about that. Okay. <laughs> He's going up against like people who did music for like the Dark Knight Rises and uh, a couple other like big blockbuster movies that came out. So I'm kind of hoping he wins this, and it'll be. The first time ever for a score to go up and actually win a Grammy, so that's kind of interesting. So that's news. <laughs> <laughs> that's the news. The past couple of months haven't been very great for video games. The MPD Group has released a report on video game sales are down by 25% in October and 11% in November. This may look bad for gaming, seeing as we had some really big titles hit in those months, but according to MPD analyst Liam Callahan, if we were to compare these numbers to the sales numbers in 2005, which was the last time that the industry was going through a transition between consoles, then we see that the sales now are actually double from, to, from the 2005 sales. Also, according to, to NPD, the newest Call of Duty Black Ops 2 has seen a 14% decrease in sales on the Xbox 360 and PS3 for its first month. Last year's version, Modern Warfare 3, sold a record-setting 8.8 .8 million units in on Microsoft and Sony's platforms in its debut month, which was a 10% increase over the 8 million units for the original Black Ops in 2010. The, the decline of Call of Duty sales has been an important topic this year, 
And granted, Black Ops 2 had seven fewer days than did the launch for Modern Warfare 3. I didn't finish that sentence. <laughs> I just read that. Anyway, while it doesn't mean the end for Call of Duty is near, it does come as a surprise seeing as the first Black Ops holds the title of best-selling Call of Duty game in the United States, with Modern Warfare 3 selling 2.7 million behind it. <laughs> Wait, are we just reading, supposed to be reading the articles rather than summarizing them? I don't know. You write your own stuff. I wrote my own stuff. Oh, okay. Yep. So did you guys know that real money online gambling is not legal in the United States? No, Chase. I didn't know that. Can you tell me that's, more about that? That's right. But Zing is banking on the idea that it will be and has taken its first step toward becoming a legal online casino. Can you guys believe <laughs> that video games are going to be a way to actually play with real live money? It's going to be I insane. I cannot believe it. That's All right, so already happened. Yeah. Sort of. Shut up. Guys. Sort of. All right, so here's here's what they did. Uh, Zynga filed an application for what's called a preliminary finding of suitability from the Nevada Gaming Control Board, which, if they are approved, will allow players from within the state of Nevada to bet on games using real money. Uh, it's going to take about a year to a year and a half but hopefully um, they will get accepted. And that's just to get uh, through the acceptance of the application process, not even um, talking about making the game itself. So, uh, yeah, good luck to Zynga. I hope you get approved. Okay, well, something new for the PlayStation Store. You can actually get a browser-based version now, so you can actually do it on your computer. It's about time Sony has caught up. But now there's a web version of the PlayStation Store, so you can actually download games and buy things on the PlayStation Store on your PC. Uh, unfortunately, it does not have anything integrated to it where, like, if your PS3 or whatever is on, that it just automatically starts downloading that game if you buy it on your PC, much like the Xbox Live Store does have. So it hasn't completely caught up. And as of right now, it's not actually available in the United States, so it must just be getting tested elsewhere or just hasn't been released completely yet. But... Can be looking forward to that in the near future. Transition. Anyway, transition to this other thing that we're going to talk about that I'll work at it. Out and post. So, did you guys hear about the Hitman Absolution profile Facebook thing that they pulled? Yeah, like, within two hours of that being up or something. Yeah, well, it, it was it, a really good idea. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. To make death threats, to promote death threats I on know. Facebook. Well, hey, I'm going to okay. kill you. Give me a double XP. <laughs> well, it wasn't necessarily uh, straight up death threats. What you could do on Facebook is you could create a hit list, which you could send to uh, different people on your friend, your Facebook list. And um, they had a lot of different uh, controversial things listed on there. You could you, you could give a reason to why you want to send a hit after them. It could be something as uh, they have an annoying laugh or awful makeup or strange odor. Mm -hmm. Or more offensive things like they have a muffin top, small tits, uh, small penis, big gut, big ears, hairy back. Now these are choices, right? You don't actually type these out. Into the yeah, yeah, I, I think these are like that. drop down menu choices. Yeah, those were drop down menu choices. The small penis stuff. Yeah, yeah. small tits. Small. They're tits. retarded. They're stupid for even putting that in there. What the heck? I can see if this controversy was from typing it out and then sending it. But what to put those choices in there? Yeah, I, come I, on. I can't imagine any marketing head possibly even giving that thing. This was a good idea. It was ridiculous. Funny if you want your company to go down. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what yes, world Square yes. Enix lives in that it's okay to like like what guy what what person in general is gonna have the, the balls to send a hit <laughs> on someone that says like, Hey, you have small tits, so I want to kill you. This have you not ever been was... on the internet before? Yeah. Yeah, but like on Facebook it's very personal. You usually add people that you know, so I'm not gonna go to some girl on my Facebook and say like Oh hey Ashley, you got small ticks. I'd like to kill you. <laughs> yeah, but we could do it to each other. Like I would send that to you, and it'd be funny or something. Yeah. 
Maybe that's what they were banking on. So this was a Square Enix decision? Uh, well, I mean, Square Enix owns uh, the guys behind Hitman, so... I imagine they at least had to sign off on it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I love Square, so hopefully... I mean, they, if they pulled it within they had about to have four had hours. Power. Right. Yeah, they pulled it quickly. I mean, it, they, they realized it was stupid, and they pulled it. It's just surprising in today's climate of gaming right now because we're really hopped up on the whole sexism thing and yeah it's really easy to be offensive i mean Internet halo 4 i mean just yeah. uh 343 like banning people for saying like the words like faggot if you get reported for that you can get perma banned from that just yeah all we're all very sensitive to these kinds of things now and, and this is a week after the number one reason why thing uh now the number one reason why you should not care about the vgas is go <laughs> that was my transition. <laughs> go. go. It's always better when you say go at the end of your statement. Well, no, my, go. It's like you guys are supposed to jump in. What's the number one reason you shouldn't watch the VGAs? Uh, uh, Jackson. Because Mass Effect 3 won best RPG. Because Borderlands 2 won best first person shooter. Like, are you. Who's voting for these things? Not us. That's the most important oh thing. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, so uh, if you didn't know, the VGAs happened this past Friday. And uh, this was the 10th annual VGAs. And overall, to be completely honest, I thought, not in terms of content, because I still think the show itself is complete garbage, I was actually surprised by the awards and actually kind of a little optimistic at what the future might hold because I thought these were some of the best awards that weren't covered with uh, Halo 4 and, and Call of Duty Black Ops or something. But that was kind of a little bit covered with those. Yeah. I, I don't think there was any real nominations that really surprised me. Mm -hmm. Game of the Year, The Walking Dead won Game of the Year. Isn't that surprising? <clears throat> no. Yeah, not really, no. It's it's that good. I look at the hype that it's gotten, though. I mean, I think, Jared, that you're just thinking that just because, like, you usually like the games that don't really get the nominations and stuff, but this time, this is, like, a hugely acclaimed game that a lot of people like. That's the whole that thing. Won. Like, the, the awards every other year has been covered in, like, Call of Duty winning stuff. Didn't it, like, who won last year? <clears throat> I think it's uh, more surprising that Journey was nominated for Game of the Year. Than well, that's that's what I was going to say. Like, look at look at The Walking Dead's competition. I mean, Assassin's Creed 3 was, um, it's not getting any hype. Dishonored was a letdown from what the trailer was and what people thought it was going to be. From Journey had no shot. Of winning, yeah. You remember that when that trailer came out, first came out, people thought it was going to be like the best game ever made. Pretty good though. And Mass Effect Three, people were clamoring for the ending to get redone. So, I mean, I'm voting for Walking Dead as well. Yeah, I, I guess my point is that I think this is one of the strongest uh, video game awards shows that they've had. It just in in the terms of who's won, who were, who was nominated. You didn't see Halo or Call of Duty. This show, by all accounts, is not for enthusiasts. No. Like this, this isn't for us. But you see games up there that we would have really wanted. And not that there aren't enthusiasts that don't want Call of Duty or something like that, but I'm saying you're seeing things that aren't as popular, popular like Journey, like Dishonored, like The Walking Dead. You know, games that, you, that I was legitimately surprised to even see up there against... Uh, Oh, I don't know. That's weird because I kind of expected Journey and The Walking Dead to win some awards. I was thinking the opposite. I mean, I knew Halo Four and Call of Duty and you know Borderlands, those big blockbuster hits, they have their place, and they still did in this in this award show. So I knew they had they're going to have their place. They're going to have their awards, and I figured The Walking Dead and Journey and them were going to show up anyway. How did Draw Something not win Best Social Game? Holy crap! Yeah, that's what we're going to transition to. I love that game. <laughs> um, so what did, what did you think of the, the VGAs as a whole? Par for the course? Pretty much. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean... It, I mean, you know, they did the typical thing of, like, hey, hello, nerds. So what are you nerding out about today? It's like, it's... Ugh. What up, nerds? It's, yeah, I just love how like disgusting, but we're all nerds because we we use Facebook and Twitter to play <laughs> games. That makes you a yeah. nerd, right? Because being a nerd is cool now. Yeah. Just Samuel Jackson's attitude, like just coming out and be like, "I'm just gonna swear a bunch." Like that's just so, like he's this bamf attitude he tries to pull off is just kind of he's a hardcore annoying. Racist too. I don't know why 
Well, yeah, it, I, sometimes I think I'm the only one that think Samuel L. Jackson was so much more of a badass when he did before he got all self self referential about it. The thing about Sam Jackson though, he does he's a better he's the best host that they've had because he can actually keep things going even if it's really lame and not necessarily entertaining. Like when Zach Levi did it last year, it was kind of awkward, and he's always like, "Hey, mm-hmm. nerds, we're all nerds." And that <laughs> yeah. gets annoying. Just pointing that out. We're nerds. Get it? We're nerds. <laughs> if you could have one person host, who would you have host the VGAs next year? Ooh, that's a good Same. question. I don't, I don't think Sam Jackson was all that bad, though. I mean, it, he's clearly reading from a teleprompter, but he's a good actor, so he played it off well. Yeah, I would. I I would probably have Aisha Taylor. <laughs> yeah, she'd probably do all right. Um, or that other guy who's that Joel, Joel guy. Joel McHale. Yeah, he'd probably do all right. Yeah. From the community, the thing is, like, they need someone who would appeal to the, you know, the mainstream people, and I think Sam Jackson does a good job of that. You know, people see Sam Jackson and they know who he is; they can identify. I mean, if they had someone from the industry do it, it would be really weird. You think so? Yeah. Who's... It'd be it'd be cool for people like us, but the mainstream yeah. people aren't gonna know who he is. It's just weird well, they just put an actor on there. And and it would also be awkward because that's like I mean that's like having like a manager of a sports team like host the Grammys like a that's yeah or like or like a or like a Hall of Fame induction award like you know what I'm saying like I don't know it might have like some sort of bias for his own company well, I mean, you know what I'm saying. If they picked a modern developer, sure, but they could go back like and pick somebody from the past or maybe, I don't know. I mean, they could have someone like a Cliff Blazinski up there and he would do all right. Yeah. But who, who, no one's going to know who Cliff is and they're just like, he's a creator of Gears of War. No one's going to care about that, honestly. Even though Gears of War is popular, they're not going to care about that as much as they're going to care about someone like Sam Jackson. Well, well like Nolan Bush now. <laughs> Nolan you know who would be really good? At, I bet Tim Schafer would be a good host. Tim Schafer is also crazy, and he'd be a good yeah, host. Yeah. But again, no one would really care or know who he is. They need those big names. Like as as much as we think it doesn't matter, it, it matters when people see like, oh, Sam Jackson's hosting it. But if you see like Cliff Bozinski or or uh, Tim Schafer's hosting hosting the Game of Year awards, everyone's like, who the heck is that? Jim Sterling should do it. But God, yeah, that would be something. Um. But yeah, in terms of content of the overall show, I still thought it was very... They spend too much time focusing on... Cause th- there's so many good awards that happen, and in, in, uh, a lot of great games won good awards, but they spend so much time focusing on like release of trailers and, and mm-hmm. musical performances that don't matter. Yeah, that, that annoys me still. Like Lincoln Park and Tenacious D. They the award to Borderlands, and they say... Borderlands also wins best multiplayer. It's like, come on. Yeah, because there's a, there's a lot yeah. of like, the Walking Dead cleaned up. They won like four awards or something like that. Uh, they won Telltale won Studio of the Year. They won game. They won best adapted game, best downloadable game, and game of the year. I thought it was really cool uh, that Half Life Two won game of the or game of the decade. Yeah, I thought you would like that. <laughs> Maybe we get it. Maybe is, it, is it really that good? I haven't played it. You got really that excited about it? You're like, yes. It deserved or, it. I think yeah, it. I, I had no idea even what to think would have won. I was like, game of the decade? Well, that's because they so many really, games. They didn't really spend any time going into the candidates, though. Yeah. It was all just flashed the them on the screen real quick. And then, yeah, that's yeah, a good clip. I think the reason it won game of the decade, like, if you go back now, you probably won't think much of it. But at the time, it depends on how you look at it when you go when going in to play it. At the time, it was it was definitely a, a huge, uh, important game. But as time went on, a lot of people... It's like one of those games that you look back and you can see, like as you play future games, you can see how developers have used what they used or what they did in Half-Life and how much it's affected mm-hmm. people you know, in their game design down the road. I think the same could be said about like games that have really changed how people are making the games as like first person shooters like Halo Combat Evolved changed a lot of first person shooters and how they were made. You could oh, argue yeah. the same for like Call of Duty 4 was like the big transition to all the rest of the Call of Duty's that are out now. No, yeah, no no, I'm not saying that other games can't be like that. Yeah. I mean Halo changed the face of of console first person shooters forever. Yeah, and so they just be just as impactful, but I mean to go up against Half-Life 2 and to argue that that should be a greater 
a candidate, you know, to get Game of the Decade it's, award. Well, it's not a fact. I mean, but there's obviously yeah. a panel of people looking at this. People vote for this stuff, so uh, a lot of people saw that as a Game of the Decade. So I think that'd be hard to vote for. Like, if even if I saw a list of five or ten games, I'd be like, I wouldn't even know what to choose. But um, going back to the awards, I think the award, the actual awards I gave out were were a lot better this year more than any other year. Mm-hmm. But it's it's a dis- it's sad that no, some games don't even get a, a, a acknowledged. Like the best PC game was XCOM Enemy Unknown, and that didn't even get recognized, and that's pretty terrible. Yeah, I, I was looking at the list, and I was like, I don't remember them even announcing this many. They didn't. I, I, I didn't take a look at the full list, like on a website or anything. All I did was watch the the stream, and I didn't even I, I don't even know what the rest of the wars are. And if and if you look at the games. That XCOM beat. I mean, Diablo three, Torchlight two, Guild Wars two. Like, holy yeah, crap! Like, give this game some credit. Like, if you're gonna give it an award, dude, give it yeah. a minute on on the stage. Like, for real. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because this one, this award show, we have other gaming <laughs> award shows, but this one is the one that reaches the masses. And it, it's. I mean, it's great that Walking Dead is out there because that's a game that. You know, a lot of people in the know have played it, but a lot of people haven't. Uh, and hopefully a lot of more people will play it now that they've seen it on the award show. But there's a lot of games on here that don't get any recognition, and it'd be great if they did on the award show so people would get, you know, kind of a, a feel or an idea for what games are good. Well, I think The Walking Dead is going to be out there anyway because of the TV show and the comic. So yeah, I actually I'm, That got, certainly helps. It's, it's, it's much more um, validating to me to see Journey up there. But hey, Journey think... won three of them. Um, so what about all the uh, the things that were announced? All the different games we saw. Uh, we saw a little bit more Bioshock Infinite gameplay. Yeah, I was, like, I, I was kind of on the fence about whether I even mm-hmm. wanted to watch that because I've been trying to stay away from all the footage for that game and come and do it fresh. But I, I watched it and it looked pretty awesome. Am I the only one that thought it looked too action heavy? Well, I mean, they're going for. that's kind of what they picked. I mean, <clears throat> you could you could take scenes from Bioshock and Bioshock Two that were similarly action. Sure, but I, I don't know. This one feels a lot more shooter focused than than anything else. Like Bioshock Infinite, in a lot of ways, looks like it's crafted this really immersive world. But then when you jump into a thing where there's like, I'm hopefully hoping you can turn off some of this UI stuff where it's showing like enemy health bars and junk like that, because that kind of stuff takes. It kind of takes away from the immersion. It's like, hey, you're playing a game when you're having like all these different, uh, you know, different things popping up. If you could play the game, sort of, you know, like Bioshock, the original well, Bioshock, Bioshock, had, Bioshock too. Bioshock had that too. They had those uh, hemispherical bars above the enemies. I think I turned those off because I don't remember those. I mean, I'm 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 not the biggest Bioshock fan, but were people clamoring for like more Call of Duty and Halo grenades in Bioshock? You know what I'm saying? Like I was that? I, I mean, that I, I never heard anything like that. Yeah. I thought the world and the story were the best part, and like I was hoping they'd focus more on that. But a lot of it seemed—I mean, not that they're going to give a lot of that away in the trailer. It's just—I mean, yeah, that was a really short trailer, so they they may go into all that, um, and we just don't know. I, I one thing I thought it did is—is is it the, it looks like the feel of it was definitely Bioshock. Um, yeah. Like when the when the box art came out, I was super disappointed in that because that looked way, uh, like it looked like an Uncharted box art basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> cool. Yeah, it, it, that could have been Nathan, Nathan Drake on the cover, yeah. um, but the, but the footage looked real Bioshock, and I was happy with it. It looked cool. Uh, Halo Four Spartan Ops continues. No one cares. Uh, <laughs> nope. <laughs> they showed a Tomb Raider uh, Survivor trailer. I thought that was pretty neat. That whole game looks awesome. It does look kind of cool. And everything that comes good out with Tomb Raider. it, everything that comes out with it is awesome looking. Yeah, there wasn't any attempted rape in the video this time. So <laughs> Should have been controversy on in there. I think they made sure of that this time. Yeah, they're saving I'm, that for the game. I'm curious was, to see how that game plays because I never really got into the Tomb Raider games before, but this one looks really neat. I am excited to see more about the Phantom Pain. Yeah, that, that looks be... really interesting. Who here thinks it's Metal Gear Solid? I I thought it was I thought it was Snake for the longest yeah, time. Yeah, a lot like Snake. 
Well, there's a lot of conspiracies. Uh, people, of course, are out there looking at the website and breaking different things down. But the one, uh, the the Moby Dick games, we've never heard of Moby Dick games before. They just came out of nowhere and they're making this game. Not that that's never happened before, but usually you kind of hear something about them before. You know, yeah. making out they have no history in making games then, right? Yeah, they're just they came out of nowhere. And you go to their website and you look at the, I think he's a CEO or whatever, but his first name, if you rearrange the letters, his name is actually Kojima. So a lot of people are assuming that it's a Metal Gear related game because we know it's not, um, what's the other Metal Gear game that's coming out? Ghost. Revengeance. Revengeance, yeah. No, not that one. That's, that's the... All oh, Ground Zero? Ground, ground Zeroes. Zeroes, yeah, Zeroes, great. We know it's not Ground Zeroes, obviously, because it's yeah. a campaign, but... Uh, it could be Metal Gear Solid Five. Who knows? Yeah, that's Maybe. that's weird. That's a that's a big surprise too. If Kojima switches his letters around to make a different name as a CEO and starts this new studio that nobody's ever heard of, well, and just comes out with Metal Gear Solid Five. It makes sense because the way Kojima is, though, like that's something you expect yeah. Kojima to to make a fake studio and then kind of hide all these different clues, you know, within the website and the trailer yeah. and stuff like that, and have fans interesting though. Know. Uh, South Park, The Stick of Truth, that looks pretty awesome. Yes. That looks amazing. I cannot wait to play that game. Oh my god, I'm going to buy that game so bad. I'm Why does it look a... awesome? I don't know, I'm not even Explain. a big South Park fan, but I think it looks it looks pretty interesting. I mean, it looks like it actually has the South Park humor. There's been other South Park games in the past, and they They're were crap. Really terrible. Shit. But, uh... I don't know, I, th- I like them. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big South Park guy. Maybe I like them. It's it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm biased against everything, man. Yes, you are. Yeah, I cannot. Are. I cannot put my true feelings aside with anything. <laughs> Dark Souls. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll get that game just for the story and the writing alone, because it, it looks to have that Trey Parker and Matt Stone stamp all over it. Yeah, the the previous games and and everything like and and the movies. I mean, they the writing had potential, but really really didn't live up to what South Park truly could be. And I think this game, like, they're really taking their time on it. Um, they're working with a lot of different people um, to, to the point where they A lot of it's just because Matt and Trey are actually taking a role in writing the thing, which yeah. they've never done before. So. Yeah, and, they're, and you know, they're, they're making the town exactly like South Park. I mean, they are taking yeah. this game directly out of the show which I can't wait to walk around South yeah, and Park. Graphically, it looks exactly like the show, which is yeah, because no real crazy. South Park game has done that. And I, I remember at E3, uh, Jared, you can you were there for this. It's like when Matt and Trey came up on stage at the Xbox press conference. They were like, "This is like this is the first time we actually had to sit down and think about oh wait, South Park. How is that a real town? Where are these things laid out in relation to the houses?" And they actually had to think of a geography for the city, which they never had to do before. Yeah. Yeah, and if you and if you ever watch South Park, you and your gamer, you know that the Warcraft episode was by far like one of the funniest episodes they ever did because it was spot on with everything. Like even my girlfriend cracks up because she like calls me a noob and shit all the time. <laughs> And uh, so they're going to, like, kind of blend that with, like, their Lord of the Rings episode, and I think, together, which are, mm-hmm. like, really, have, have, like, really strong writing in those episodes. The thing and that I'm... In that trailer, the clip, you saw a lot of clips of, like, characters from the past, and it's like a Simpsons thing where they got... It's been on long enough where they got so many backstories and so many characters, and if they just can just cram all those in there, it could be really awesome. And the thing that I'm excited for, kind of going off what, what you said, Chase, with the kind of the, the writing and kind of getting in the, the certain gamer culture, a lot of people try to do a lot of, like, dorky things within games, like Borderlands 2 had a bunch of memes in it, you know, but not ironically, like, they were, like, serious memes, and uh, that's not funny. That's not what humor is. And South Park, at least they, they understand, like, even if they're saying things like noob, they're saying it ironically. You know, it's not like they're serious, like, hey, guys, get it. We're part of your culture because we say noob and, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Well, they, remember they got... the, the, the Simpsons game from a few years back? That that did kind of the same thing really well, too. Yeah. It was it's kind surprising of when you see... of video games, and it, and it worked awesome. Yeah, they, it's surprising when you can see them not only put humor in video games and done well, but also make fun of our own culture and still do it well and not really dorky. And uh, Dark Souls 2. Dark Souls 2. 
<laughs> Anyone excited for that? You're seriously going to die this time edition. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's, I, I think that's the one game I didn't expect to see. A lot of people are excited for it, though. Like They kept talk, like referencing it after they at first announced it. Everybody was like, I just can't wait for Dark Souls 2. Yeah. Really? Has that you played any of the Dark Souls or Demon Souls games? I need to play that game. I, I tried. I really did. I tried like three times to play Demon Souls, and I just couldn't even get past the first area. And I just got super frustrated, and I just stopped. Like it, I love those games in theory for what they are, and I have fun playing them. But I just I, I can't do it. <laughs> it. It's literally one of those games where you have to when when you sit down to play it, you got to sit down for like half an hour and realize that you cannot die, and you're gonna get past this one little area. You're gonna save, and you're gonna put your controller down. Because if you keep going, you're going to get destroyed, and you're going to get frustrated, and you're never going to come back to it. That's so, what happened to me. I would sit yeah. down and put like two hours into it and get zero progress. Right. <laughs> just, I get be... so close to the end, and then I die, and I've accomplished nothing. Right. Resurrecting at the same damn campfire <laughs> every time. I know. It's so People demotivating. People obviously love it. There's obviously a, a huge crowd mm. for that. Yeah, and then you had that one Asian dude on YouTube that <laughs> ran through the whole game and never There's attacked. An Asian guy on YouTube. Oh my god, it was insane. <laughs> this, great dude, Dark Souls. <laughs> this dude beats Dark Souls without like attacking ever. It's in, it's incredible. Uh, Gears of War Judgment. Does anyone care about that? No, no. It looks cool, but it, it everybody knew it was, it was coming. Yeah, we already knew that from a while ago. Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2, I was surprised that this was even at the VGAs. I didn't think this was that big of a game. I didn't even know that was a Castlevania game when I saw the trailer. Even though they said Castlevania right before it. How did I thought I said at the end. Must have been paying attention. Uh, and then there's The Last of Us. We saw a little bit more gameplay of that. Some gameplay, some cutscenes. I get a boner every time someone even says The Last of Us. I'm so excited. <laughs> Anything else you guys want to talk about with the VGAs? Uh, yeah. <laughs> RPG. What? One, one, Mass Effect 3? Yeah, go kill yourself. Alright, moving on. I think, I think Linkin Park should go kill themselves. Hey, they wrote a song about being in glass while playing Medal of Honor. <laughs> For the troops! These yeah, because they, they look so war-hardened. No, because because yeah, when I think my love honor, of course I think of Linkin Park. Those performances are dumb. However, Tenacious D at the end. I mean, Tenacious D is well. That was cool. But uh, did anyone else realize that the there was a that the the rooster thing in the back was actually a giant cock? Yeah, I noticed that. I thought I thought it was a giant penis with like two balls, like at the bottom. It was. But then they panned up and like when they did an overshot in like in the back of the audience, it didn't look like that at all. It must yeah, have changed but from the front of it. It's supposed to look like a like a giant penis. <laughs> yeah, it definitely did. I, th I thought I was just looking at the wrong thing. Pretty much, people are confirming that this is Metal Gear Solid Five. There's a bunch of coincidences, by the way. Just to go back to the Phantom Pain thing, uh, there was a bunch of people from Konami wearing T-shirts for the Moby Dick Studio thing and the Phantom Pain. Uh, in the trailer, it like it flashes really quick. Metal Gear Solid Five in the background, where it said the Phantom Pain. Yeah, okay. if you're listening to this right now on a computer, go to Google and image the Phantom Pain versus Metal Gear Solid, and like they take Snake's face and like put it together, or what is supposedly Snake's face. Also, there were that. I forgot to say this. There were people who were in the Konami booth or whatever that were wearing, like you said, Devin. They were wearing uh, like Moby Dick Studio shirts and mm. paint shirts and stuff like that. So that's pretty much a. a I like the gif there. I don't know if that's true or if they just made that gif up, but. Right. But hey, it's on the internet, so we'll take it as fact. Yeah, true. All right, well, let's take a break, and then when we come back, we'll talk about games we've been playing.
powerful, the beautiful Devin Miller bring us back. Hey guys, we're back. Episode. Uh oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> what episode is this? The 55. Episode 20. Episode 20, Games of the Week. Chase, why don't you playing. start us off? Because I've heard, I don't know if this is true, but I've heard you've been playing some type of indie game. That is correct. I wonder who you heard that from. Um, I'm playing a game called Cairo. It's called K A I R O, um, and uh, it's it's really really weird. It's it reminds me of if Minecraft and well like was a puzzle game, and then you threw in like mist, and it I I don't know man. It is it's creepy and it's freaky. Um, uh, I'm I'm not sure. I've I've only played I would say probably twenty percent of it. Um, I haven't run into any like enemies or anything like that. Um, it's pretty basic. There's only like a jump and a sprint button, um, and sprinting is only really helpful for like making you go um, like faster. Like I haven't really um, had a puzzle that needed me to sprint at all. So it's just like a time saver. So what's the um, what's the overall premise of the game? Like, what are you trying to do? The premise is just to go forward, really. I mean, to to make your way through this place. Um, it it doesn't tell you anything. There's there's really so is there nothing. Any kind of story whatsoever? No, not at all. Not yet, at least. Um, <clears throat> when you walk. Like, does it even make you think, like, there might be a story? Like, you just end up in this place? And... Yeah, a, yeah, a little bit. I mean, you, you literally, the game starts, like, there's no start screen. It just starts you off, and then you walk toward this building, and, like, you start going in through the maze or whatever. But if you walk, like, off the path a little bit, you get this kind of, like, alien buzzing sound. And, like, this one time, uh, a couple pictures fell down, and it looked like... It looked like Area 51 or like some sort of city that had been bombed out and like there was just this alien like nee, 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 nee. and then just like I don't know it was crazy I was like freaking out and I was trying to you make out like, like you're on drugs right now. I know yeah <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> I you're felt like, like it playing this game bad. yeah I felt like it and um yeah but the game the the puzzles what I love about it they're, they're, you walk into a room and you immediately know that like, all right, this is definitely a puzzle room here. I got to solve some sort of thing here. And um, it's really forgiving um, because you don't have to like exit or fail. Uh, you just like kind of go forward and try it again, you know, like you just kind of redo it, which is, which is what I like. Can um, you, uh, can you, go past a room or do you have to finish the puzzle first and before you can go anywhere else? Yeah, the first the first real section, um, there was like this little symbol on the wall and it was divided up into four. And so I was like, all right, obviously there's like four sections to this main puzzle thing right here because it had like a couple offshoot rooms. So I went and I solved a puzzle here and I solved a puzzle there. But... Um, like I got back to the room after going through all the rooms and I'm like, holy crap, what's up with this? So it turns out like I totally passed up a puzzle because I, I was just going too fast, you know? So it's one of those games where you really got to pay attention to detail. Um, and, and I really like the, the way it looks. I mean, it's really simple with all the shapes and it's huge. I mean, it has rooms and rooms and rooms and rooms. So it's really, really cool, man. I definitely suggest checking it out. Um, when I'm done with it, I'm going to write a review. So make sure to go to pixelperfectmag.com and check that out when I'm done. I guess. Wow. Yeah, it looks very cool. I, I've seen a little bit of video of it, and it's very abstract. Uh, if there is a story, it's it's probably well hidden, but it's it's very atmospheric, and it seems super cool. For that good description. <laughs> it seems fun. Is it on yeah. Steam or like GOG or where's that? Uh, it is on. He, I contacted him. He sent me the code through humblebundle.com. Well, you can buy it directly off of his so, site, and it's also yeah. available on iOS and Android. Yeah, there you go. Oh, okay. How oh much, shoot. PC do you know how much it is? As well. uh, it was eight dollars, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty cheap, but it, it's. 
fairly large game from what I understand. How are the graphics in it? Is it like update? Is it like 16 bit or something like that, or good graphics? No, it looks like. It looks like it was built in the Unity Unity engine. Yeah, and and everything's like real blocky and triangly, and everything's like really like. Yeah, the really the, geometric. The scene look very geometric and. Yeah. It's real shapey and squarey and blocky and stuff. But that's like not why you play it. Like you play it for like because it you blows your it mind and you, gotta, and you gotta think. Right, exactly. I mean, there's tons of cool shapes in there, but you don't play. <laughs> we don't play for the shapes here. <laughs> Whatever, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna totally play for the cool shapes. There were triangles, there's a lot of, squares, a lot of jerks out there who are like, "Oh, the shapes look real good in this game," but like, look, look, bro, it's not about the shapes. It's about the best the shapes ever. I play Minecraft for the circles, man. It's not about the shapes. Yeah, that, shapes that'll are be way different than circles. <laughs> That'll be a year-end award, best shapes. Right. <clears throat> so what game had the best shapes this year? Sound shapes. Uh, that's really oh, that's right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Because they're music shapes. Devin. Devin, why don't you go next and tell us what you've been playing. Well, is Chase done? He only yeah, plays Chase one game? Done. Yeah, done. and then I play League of Legends. <laughs> <out. Character. laughs> uh, can we get an update on Diablo Kevin. 3, please? Uh, Diablo 3, no PvP still. What? Oh, oh shoot. shoot. My god. I will reinstall the game once the PvP comes out. No kidding. <laughs> I will too. I I will uninstall it right along with you, Jared, if they don't come out with something <laughs> soon. Jesus. <laughs> <Christ. laughs> for a while. <laughs> <sighs> so you're not playing it. Me? You're no. Not it. not right now. I I'm playing uh League of Legends. I just bought the new champion that they came out with. So. How many are they up to now? 20, 2004 champions? Oh my god. They gotta be they gotta be close to 40, 50. How does anyone know all that stuff? I know every single champion. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> if you if you tell me the name or a skill or what if you Ragnar, describe the red face. That's not no, that's not any of them. But if you like Queen describe <laughs> Princess um, Mr. Queen B. <laughs> oh my god. How they play. Yeah. I actually I follow them. I follow the pro scene too. I'm trying to get really, really good. That's, that's all right. Not, You're gonna see that's me not gonna happen. Main stage, baby. Main stage. <laughs> no, that's not gonna if happen. If this podcasting doesn't work, I'm definitely going for that. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, that's pro. right. MLG Pro right now. Well, yep. we're just gonna have to stop paying you at Pixel Perfect. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Your contract with us is over. Conflict of interest. Conflict of interest for sure. <laughs> we have you on for like two year contract, so sorry. Is that it? Yeah. It's cool. So we'll be gone in two years. <laughs> Damn, <I'd go. laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I've been playing this game called Grand Theft Auto Vice City. That just came out last week I for hear the iOS. Oh man, the nostalgia is amazing. That's the only reason I got it. Yeah, but is playing it without <sighs> an actual controller? Okay, that's not even a question, Jared. Of course. Yeah, it's it's a dumb question. But it doesn't really matter. It's it's nice to have that like on the go, just to, like, you know, play and listen just it's drive around and listen to the music, listen to the the talk talk radio stations and just play some missions. It's just it's still fun to play. On the iPad, it's just a different experience. You just have to get used to it. I'd rather not. Still, it's it's not that bad. I mean, obviously, it's just like a direct port. It looks fine on the iPad, but yeah, it's mostly just nostalgia reasons. And it just came out. It's only five dollars. I think it's totally worth it. Do you anyway. guys think? Do you guys think pure nostalgia, or having a game on the go? Is a reason to rebuy a game? I, I I would say so. Nostalgia mostly. I mean, like if they came out with like HD editions of GTA games or some games that I really really love, I would rebuy them just for that yeah. fact. I I I have and do. <laughs> yeah, I repurchase a lot of games. I own multiple copies of many many games that I games that I really like. You know some of my favorite games, so I own multiple copies, and yeah, I mean, if they make a portable version of it, like on DS or something, if it can easily be translated to that, then yeah, I would definitely do that as well. 
All right, dumb question, Jace. Chase. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I was just trying to. <laughs> you didn't even answer yourself. Yeah. Um. Yeah, maybe not nostalgia, but if they remade something to make it look I don't understand better, I would. I would be bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't understand the question. <laughs> uh, Wait. So you're saying. <clears throat> not if the nostalgia, nostalgia, not for nostalgia though. For what? That is correct. Yeah. If I wanted nostalgia, I'd just go plug in my PS One again and. Sometimes it's not always convenient though. Said. Like sometimes I just get on the kick of wanting to play a certain game, and if I have it on the go or whatever, and maybe I don't have my PS One hooked up, or PS Two. Yeah, or maybe I'm lazy because like I own many versions of Half Life Two, because I talked about the four. Obviously, I like that game a lot. Uh, and one of the first. I played it originally on PC, but I didn't have that version anymore. And then I had it on the original Xbox, and then no way I want to hook up my original Xbox to play that again, so I yeah. had to rebuy it on other systems. Yeah, that's not happening. That's why I, I always love backwards compatibility with consoles. That's always a good thing for me. I wish I had the original PS3s that were backwards, backwards compatible, but I don't. So I, I do. It's sitting uh, <sighs> here, so still jealous. broken. Oh, <laughs> it's still broken. It's nice. I got it's still it, but I it's been sitting here next to my computer for about a year, broken. And mm -hmm. it sucks because I have a game stuck inside there, too. Why, seriously, yeah. why are they getting rid of backwards compatibility? Save money. It's too much money. And it makes them no money. I don't think there's as big of a demand for it, either. There should be. Really? I mean, I think, it's a, I think it's a huge deal. Yeah, but that's us. <laughs> right, <laughs> I don't think we're only people, four people. Like a lot of people who bought the Wii weren't like, man, can't wait to play all those GameCube games I bought because like, <laughs> I bought the GameCube. Well, it's, I think that's a bad example. <laughs> Even with the original Xbox, I don't know anyone that picked up a 360 and was like, man, can't wait to pop an original Halo or Brute Force. But with, but the, with the PS3, you mean... <laughs> Brute Force. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess the PS3 was was the only one. Yeah, because the there were so like, many PS2 games, yeah. man. Yeah, it's like PS2 one of the biggest really and best game libraries in history now. And even PS1 games, man, they're still fun to go back and play. Like the original mm -hmm. Twisted Metal is still fun to go back and play. I think you mean Twisted Metal Three. You mean Twisted Metal? 2. You mean Twisted Metal Three? Yeah, two. You most yeah. certainly don't mean three. <laughs> it's kind of backwards. Though. I mean, you have the Wii; it's backwards compatible with the GameCube, which like no one cares about. And then you had, like, the 360 who did, like, random games. Like, you're like, I'm not sure if this will work with my Xbox 360, you know, regular Xbox games. And then the PS3 actually had it and then discontinued it. It's like, what, what the heck? With that, with the 360, they're like, all right, well, we have, like, 13 games that are back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, like, as time goes on, we'll update them once in a while, just pop it in and see what happens. I don't know. Like, except for none of mine worked. Except for, like, Halo. Yeah, no, you'd pop in one in, in like, or, like, really obscure games that no one cares about, like Conflict or something. <laughs> Plus, Conflict they'd, they'd something. rather you spend another $10 and buy it digitally. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually probably the better way to go, marketing-wise. Just like, oh, all right, we'll put this on the store, and you can buy it on there and just download to your Xbox. Because they know people will. Yeah, and that's exactly what they're doing <laughs> with the PS3. I mean, that's a huge market for them. Yeah. But the, buying PS2 and PS1 games on the store... Tons of money, I guarantee you. Same with the Wii, I guess. Tons of money, I guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you. Just I'm talking about guarantee. I'll tell you, tons of money. You know. <laughs> <laughs> right, get it all in there, brother. <laughs> what did you even say? <laughs> I said... <laughs> what did you in there, brother? <laughs> I said raking it all in there, brother. Uh, okay, what was that? What, what accent was that? Uh, I don't know. I usually combine my accents when I talk and uh, try to make them. Yeah, <laughs> it was a strong... Like, Scandinavia, I'm going to guess. That's when I used my first... Oh, yeah. By the way, I've been playing this game called Into the Dead. And uh, it's basically just, like, a Jet Slalom game. If anybody's ever played that, the Flash game. You know what I'm talking jet about? Jet Song game. Jet Slalom? Is that how you pronounce it? Slalom? Slalom? Slalom. Like, you're that jet, and you like you have Slalom. to, like, d just move back and forth to dodge, like, the triangle trees oh, as yeah. they come at you. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what this is. It's, it's. You're just running away from zombies. Like you start out in a field, and you're, just, you're, you're just a person oh, like in first person game. view. Yeah, but it, it's just. Yeah, it's just like a jet slalom. Basically, like it forces you to run at a certain pace, and you know you can't stop it. You just keep running, and there's zombies just pop up everywhere, and then eventually, like you go to harder places. Like you get into a forest where there's trees, you have to dodge as well. 
and you go into like a crop field so you can't really see it like go in a straight line and then like go through the crops left or right but like there's lines of crops so and you can get like weapon crates and stuff pickups whenever you go through so you can like pick up a pistol with some ammo so you don't actually have to move around a zombie or if there's a bunch of zombies you can keep going straight and just kill them as you go and it's pretty easy you just like tap the middle of your screen and shoot your gun but I mean each zombie takes like three or four shots to actually kill so you have to do it at a decently far distance but it's an interesting game and it's it's usually like those games are usually about like how far you can get but uh and this one's kind of separated because it actually has something called yeah something called missions. That's what I was gonna say. It has missions. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> All right, guys, open your mind to this. Idea. It has missions to it. Missions. Yeah, and you win missions or you you complete missions by doing like specific objectives, like getting a new high score or killing so many zombies or getting so many coins or getting so many crates and so much ammo, or whatever. And then you get to the next mission, even though it's the exact same level that you're playing over and over. <clears throat> But at least it feels like you're accomplishing something. And then you can also unlock weapons like chainsaws and other guns and stuff. So it's an interesting game. It's just fun to play on the side, which I don't even know why I downloaded it. But I just, I just saw, like, recommended games or, you know, good games for iOS or on iPad or something. I just downloaded random ones. So it's interesting. So that missions thing sounds kind of cool because I've played a few, like, Infinite Runner games, and they get old really quick. Yeah, they do. And I thought this was the same way until, like... It, it just like it told you the missions that you did and like the ones you objectives that you completed and I was like I didn't even know what that meant. But I beat a couple missions and you just you play the same thing, but now you just have to do different things in the same level. That's kinda cool. So it does give you an incentive to like keep playing and and you get a bunch of coins. Obviously to market this game since it's a free game, you can buy like hundreds of thousands of coins to use in the the thing they call the armory where you can buy weapons and stuff. But I'm not going to actually use real money to buy that stuff. <laughs> but it's interesting. Cool. cool. It's a zombie game, so that's new. Yeah, so check it out if you like zombies. Or games. Yeah, either or. Missions. New. If you like missions and games. <laughs> yeah, screw it. I'm playing it for the missions. I, I don't like zombies. I don't even care about the zombies. This game has missions. I don't even like games. I just like missions. <laughs> yeah. Travis, uh, what have you been playing this week? Um, I've been playing a couple different things. Um, the I know it's not really a new game at all, but uh, I got my copy from Gamefly of um, what is it? Rhythm, uh, Rhythm, Rhythm and the Emperor's Treasure. It's what? it's like Rhythm Heaven. It's it's like a combination of Professor Layton and um, <gasps> Elite Beat Agents. Like if you can imagine that. Um, like. Professor Layton thing where you have a story through like static screens um, and you have a map that you go to and then when you're on each environment you can tap on the screen to collect hidden coins and things like that. Um, so that's kind of how it's structured except instead of puzzles you're playing little uh, music mini games like Elite Beat Agents style almost and they change, they change up the mini games a lot so it, it's, it's pretty cool. <coughs> um, Obviously, you guys are completely. Totally What's it about? Um, it takes place. I think. <laughs> what is everything you just said? What are you even saying with your uh, mouth? Wait, no, no. Oh, can you say it again? I don't understand the question. <laughs> um, you're like this guy, this kid who's like a like a thief. Um, it's he's a kid. It's like his disguise, and like at night he becomes this thief and tries to steal like artifacts and art and things like that. So it was like an art thief in, in like... <laughs> an art thief? <laughs> Sounds yep. compelling. It's like Sly Cooper. It is. Uh, but yeah, it's like apparently there gets in, <laughs> as it gets into the story, there's like uh, guys that are after you. And I don't know. I haven't gotten too far in the story yet, but... <laughs> so there's, <laughs> so there's <laughs> enemies. <laughs> yeah, there's enemies that come after you and you have to play the music... What what's yeah. this for? Oh yeah, I forgot. There's music in this game. What the heck? What do you do with music? It's for the three DS. Oh okay. I'm sorry if you already said that. I I didn't actually. Yeah. So. Okay. So <laughs> downloadable game only or you, you actually have No, it's copy? it's a card. Uh physical card. Um but yeah, it's fun. If you like the Professor Layton games and like music games, you should check it out. Oh, I love Professor Layton games. Is yeah. there a lot of like uh 
puzzles in the same way that, like, in the vein of Professor Layton? Like, they're those kind of puzzles? He just said no. no. There's no puzzles at all. Um, <laughs> really? Okay. I'm not, I'm, I'm he said instead of the puzzles, they replaced that. Right. Blah, 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 you know? Okay. Um, but you do t- tap on the screen at the different screens to find hidden coins, and you use that to unlock uh, different instruments, I think, and uh, tracks in the music player. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Seems the music mini games are fun. Is it like a Guitar Hero thing? No, not at all. It's it's like um like have you ever played Elite Beat Agents? No, see, I don't even know what the heck that is. Okay, um, well the songs tend to be rather Japanese, um, and they have different tapping games where you have to tap on certain places in the screen to the beat. Um, like if an enemy's coming at you, you have to tap to kind of hit the enemy. Oh. There's one where you're like chopping up food in a restaurant, and you have to kind of swipe the screen to spread something like on a hamburger. Um, they, there's a lot of variety to the mini games, actually. Which are you, is nice. are you going on the same beat, kind of like Rhythm Heaven, where you have to like hit a certain beat? Sometimes, okay. but yeah, I mean it's pretty much all of the beat, whether you're swiping or tapping. Um, the scenarios change up a lot, so it gives a lot of variety. Because the, I mean, um, like Elite Beat Agents, it's like it very tappy. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of the same thing over and over, but this changes things up a lot, so it's kind of neat. Cool. Um, the other thing I've been playing is I downloaded the uh, Nino Kuni demo on PS3. Um, that's that RP the like a cart like animated RPG. It's like a Miyazaki movie almost. It is looks beautiful. Well, it is Miyazaki. <laughs> Is is he actually attached to it? Yeah, he, he's actually doing the art for it. Oh, Studio exactly. Ghibli is uh, doing the. That explains it. That <laughs> didn't know that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's very cool. It, it's the art looks great. Um, there's a lot of shading and it's very vibrant and colorful. Um, the the music is a little bit stereotypical, but it you know like the overworld map is like grandiose and uh, majestic, and so it's a little stereotypical. But the music is, seems really well done, and. Um, totally epic. Did you play? Uh, did you play that E3? Um, I did not get a chance to play that at E3. No. Okay, because I didn't know if it was going to be the same exact demo as that. Because I did play. It, there was two parts to it. You, you yeah. Like, uh, where you just run around the world, and then the other part where you actually. Wait, what were they? One was like running around the world, and the other one was like doing battles or something, running around town. The like, yeah. There's two scenarios, and the first one you go to meet this big tree guy and he talks to you and he gives you something and then you have to go back to a town and give it to this guard who's supposedly sick and you have to make him better. Um, and then the other scenario is like you're in this volcano and you have to climb all the way to the top of the volcano and stop it from erupting somehow. Um, do, you, do you feel like you're playing like almost like an anime or do you feel like it's a video game? Like I don't know, it's hard to it's hard to ask my question because it looks <laughs> well, but how, it looks how does it so feel much. Like playing anime? Does it, I don't know, it, it looks it looks so much like it does. Like, it pulls you know, off the anime really well. It it basically looks like feels like you're controlling like a Miyazaki film. Oh um, yeah, like the art right. is spot on. Yeah, like a Miyazaki film. But that does even during like gameplay, like even during yeah, like, all the points it looks like around. That. The gameplay is a little bit different. Like, um, it, it's it's from level five, and level five are the people that did um, they they did the Dark Cloud games. Uh, if anybody remembers those, they did a couple of the Dragon Quest games for PS2, Jean de Arc. They did the Professor Layton games. Um, so they got some good pedigree behind them. Um, and the battle system, it's like you see the enemies on the overworld map. And then when you, you know, touch the enemies, you it kind of does the RPG thing of it switches to a battle scene. And then you have the menu commands, and you select attack or spells or items like that. And there's an active time system to that. But you have free range of movement within that battle arena. Um, so you're not just enemies on one side, you on the other. You can move around freely, three-dimensionally. Wow. That sounds like a new concept, is it? No. no. I mean, it, it sounds like a cross between, like, the Tales games, like Tales of Asperia and stuff. And, a little bit. Like, it's a little bit like right, Tales like, or, like, the, yeah. uh, like, the more recent Star Ocean games. Right, yep. Um, so it's a little bit like that. It's kind of nice to have the free range of movement while you, you know, pick certain spells and items. 
Um, no, it, it's been a while since I've played it, but I remember that you could, you had almost like little, they were almost like little Pokemon that yeah. you, could, you had with you, and you could have them, I can't remember, because there was a lot of different menus in the, in the combat. It wasn't, it didn't feel like a traditional JRPG, uh, because you could like fight yourself, or you could have them do certain attacks or, or something like that. I can't really remember how I... I was yeah, it, like when you first enter in a battle, you can you can pick who you want to control, whether it's uh, the main character, the boy, or one of the other people you have with you. What they call um, crap? I can't remember what they call them. Uh, I don't know. They're they're basically like Pokemon or avatars or different um, different creatures you have with you, and you can control them too. They have their own attacks um, just and their own spells. Um, so it kind of switches things up a little bit, and then you can switch back and forth um, at any point in the battle. So if one guy's, you know, running out of attacks, or the other guy has an attack that's stronger against a particular type of enemy, you can switch on the fly. So that's kind of cool. I'm sure you guys are going to give it horrible reviews because it involves things like Pokemon. Oh, yeah. And you guys hate Pokemon. Well, who's reviewing it? He uh, just played a demo. Yeah, it was just a demo. There's not going to be a review yet. It's not oh, coming no. out until... Can you review the demo? I can write something up on the demo. I can't review it. <laughs> yeah, you, can review it. you should review the, the trailer. demo. You I'm reviewing review the this 20-minute section of the game. Let's just review it now. We'll get it out before anyone else. The yeah. ending really sucked. I didn't even get <laughs> to see it. The ending of the demo was lame. Uh, but it's cool. I'm, I'm excited for it. I was, I loved the art style and everything I've seen but I was really curious on how it played. Um, but now after playing it and getting my hands on it, it seems really cool. One thing I will say is that when you like send out your little avatar pygmy guys, whatever, um, you have partners with you at some point, and they can have little pygmy guys that they send out as well. So depending on how many enemies are in that particular battlefield, there's a potential that it seems like it can get kind of chaotic. Yeah, because uh, when I played the demo... I, it was me and like a girl, and then we yeah. used to choose little little guys. Yeah, you choose from a it. number of guys. It was almost like choosing uh, like a like a summon or something like that going into battle. But they were always out the, the entire time. So we had like four of my guys just like running all over the place, and then the enemies running all over the place. Yeah, um, I, I does it, it's no. There's no way to tell right now like how many partners you have potentially with you at any one point. But, yeah, in the second scenario, it was me as a little boy, and I had three little Pokemon things that I could pick from, and then the girl had three of her own that she could pick from. Um, and then there were two enemies on screen. I don't know if how many enemies are potentially able to be in a single battle, but, you know, with multiple enemies and multiple little creatures, yeah, it could get hectic real quick. But, yeah, I'm excited for it. It, looks, it, it plays really nice, and it looks cool. The spell effects are kind of neat and interesting. Um, you have your fire spells, lightning spells, um, but the effects are done well. So I'm looking that's, forward to it. That's an exclusive PS3 game, right? Yes. Um, and then the character design looks really cool too. Very Japanese, obviously. Um, you know, your little creature you have with you is that is that little weird looking dude with like a pointy nose and he's got like a lantern hanging off of his nose. So really strange stuff there, but you know, it's it's neat. When's it coming out? Uh, January, I believe. Okay. So actually, yeah, with, within a month or two. Cool. Well, uh, I've been playing one game this week. I've been playing Plant Side 2. A whole heck of a lot of it. Because that game is pretty awesome. <laughs> and it's free, so that's even better. Free to play, yep. Uh, Plant Side 2 takes... Uh, I mean, if you don't know what Plant Side is, it's a massively multiplayer online first-person shooter. And uh, you basically you choose from three different factions. I went with the Terran Republic, not because of any particular reason. They're just the one I chose. And uh, I jumped in on a server. And, and when you first play this game, it can be a little bit overwhelming uh, because there are a lot of different systems going on. I mean, at the heart of it, it is a shooter, but there's a lot of other different things you can do because it's a class-based shooter. So you have kind of like heavies and you have uh, engineers and medics and snipers and, and different things like that. And there's a lot of vehicles that, that you can use and you have to get used to. Um, I've been playing by myself. However, 
it, where Planet Side 2 really shines is when you get into a group who knows what they're doing. If you get into, like, I, I jump, you can jump into a squad. The cool thing about it is you can go to your menu and you can look at the available squads, or on your keyboard, if you hit the insert key twice, it'll just automatically throw you in, it, in any old squad. And um, when you're in a squad, especially when you're in a good squad, you'll have a person who's like a commander, and they tell you what to do. They can set waypoints on your map and say, like, all right, we're going to go and we're going to take over this place. We're going to go and defend this place. And uh, if you ever played, like, a Battlefield game, it, it, it goes for what Battlefield has tried to go for, uh, which some Battlefields were successful with it. Like, 1942 was really successful, and Battlefield 2 was fairly successful. Battlefield 3 wasn't as successful. Um, but of that big, like massive battle where you're you're working together and and you're all trying to accomplish one goal together and uh it can be really exciting like there's nothing for me there's nothing more exciting than when you're working with like this massive group and you're just you're either defending a base uh you know you see all these ships just flying all through the air and you're in guns like trying to blast them down and then like i play an engineer class so i i love playing support classes um i don't really mess around with any of the other I play engineer or medic because those are the two I like I always like playing support and so like if we're defending a base and there's just like these massive battles happening I'm running around and I'm like repairing guns and I'm throwing down ammo and you know I'm setting up turrets uh, and it's a it's a lot of fun because I I'm constantly having to run back you know there's always something new going on so like I a gun goes down so I go over there and I repair it real quick and then I have to run to like the other side to to repair it uh, but like along the way, someone needs ammo, so I gotta run up, toss some ammo, and then like there's these guys in big mech suits, and I heal them real quick, and then I run over to go heal another gun, go fix another. You're gun. healing people as a medic or as an engineer. No, there's guys who wear like these big mech suits, and you 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 have to repair their suits. Oh, and that's healing them. That's their suits. that's healing their suits. Yeah, I said that incorrectly, but yeah, you're you're repairing their suits. Um. And it's just like crazy massive battle going on. Or the same thing when you're attacking, you know, you're pushing in and, and you have like all this, you like load up, your commander says like, go back to this place and load up on, on artillery and stuff. And like you get in like a bunch of heavy armor, like tanks and, and different <coughs> uh, flying vehicles. And you're just like storming this base and just these a absolute massive battles. And when you have people that know what they're doing and they work well together, which from my experience happens fairly often, at least on, on my server. See, that, that's what I was going to ask, is, like, how often does that happen, really? It, the, the thing is, I've always said that, like, you, <clears throat> you will find some dicks and some useless people on PC, but for the most part, a lot of PC players are pretty helpful and work well together. It's not like Xbox Live. You're not being called, uh, like, a faggot or, or a bunch of other homophobic or racial slurs. So you're you're working well together people you usually have fairly good commanders half the time it's usually people who have been playing since the beta so they know what they're doing um cause how I do you choose a commander again like who who knows who's a commander or not i'm not sure how that get, that that gets chosen i think they start a squad cuz you can start your own outfit so like if the four of us or the five of us wanted to play together and uh we went in like i could start an outfit or start a squad or whatever and then we could all jump in together is that like a clan an outfit is an that... outfit's a clan yeah uh, and then we could start a squad, like, and I could lock the squad to just the five of us, and if we wanted to play together, and we could just roll around together, or we become a part of a different, a larger one, which has like Alpha, Charlie, Beta, Bravo, whatever. Bravo, yeah. What's, what's Alpha, the... Charlie, Beta, Alpha, Beta, Delta, Delta, Delta Sigma, Sigma, Delta, Foxtrot. So, like, when you have one like that, when we're like four <clears throat> squads together. Then you have like the overall commander who can tell everyone to go to one place, but then you also have your squad commander who can tell you to go to specific places. And it's it's hectic, but when it works, it's it's an incredible experience. Uh, like I said, if you're jumping in by yourself and you don't know how to join any squads and you don't do anything like that, you you're probably going to be lost. You're probably going to jump in and not enjoy it at first because it's not going to make a lot of sense. You're not going to know what to do. Because they're really, they don't give you a lot of tutorials. There's not a lot of things telling you what to do. Uh, you kind of just got to figure it out on your own. Uh, it is free to play, so you can do everything. Like, nothing's really, uh, nothing locks you out. But you can pay money 
to upgrade certain things. Or if you work in the game, like everything that you can pay money for, you can work for in the game because you earn things called credits and you use those credits to unlock uh, different weapons or upgrade your weapons. It does have an RPG element to it because you are leveling up like uh, as an engineer, I have my repair tool and I can level that up. Uh, you can level up different to get different weapons, to get different attachments to weapons, uh, different abilities to add to your character. Like I can have like a, a regenerating health sort of uh, attachment perk thing, uh, or you know, and an throwing down ammo for other players perk ability thing. So what about the fighting? You really talk about the fighting, the shooting of aspect of the first person shooter. You you just talk about like staying back and helping your crew. Well, I mean, that's typically what I people. play. I do, I do kill people occasionally. Uh, the shooting, at first, it isn't... It, the, the, probably the... I don't want to say it's the weakest part, but probably... It probably is the weakest part, but I don't want to make it sound like it's really bad. Like, the shooting isn't as solid as something like Halo or Call of Duty or Counter-Strike or, you know, any other uh, well-handling first-person shooter. Uh, but as you get different attachments for it, it, it tends to work itself out and, and tends to work a little bit better. But at first, mm -hmm. it, it has a lot of recoil. So when you're shooting the guy, you really have to handle your recoil. And so it can get a little annoying. I mean, maybe that's just because I'm an engineer and I play that so much, but maybe if you start as another class, the accuracy on your weapons are a little bit, bit better. I honestly don't know. So it's like you kind of pick a class and you want to build that one up specifically, I mean, or do you want to join... Like, when you earn credits, you can put credits into any class that you want. Because I'm jumping between oh, Medic and... You don't earn them for your class that you're playing currently? No, you just earn them in general. And oh. then you do you do level up, which I'm not sure what that actually yields yet. You just have a battle rank that you can level up. Okay. I don't know if that goes towards credits or what. Um, well, I have downloads, so I can play it. Yeah, I think you would like it, too, because I know you like playing support classes as well. I know this doesn't appeal to everyone. I know I'm just talking about like one facet of it. If you like killing people, there's a whole lot of killing you can do. Uh, you can jump in like giant uh, airplane, these like airship things. And for me, th there's nothing more exciting than like jumping in a giant plane and then like soaring <coughs> over with. And you look to your sides, and there's like six other uh, airships with you, and you're about to go bomb a base, and you have like seven people on on the one you're on right now, and you get there and like. Bullets are flying everywhere. Explosions are everywhere, and you're you're shooting off your guns, and the guys like <laughs> flying all around trying to dodge miss missiles and stuff like that. It's really exciting. Well, how, what are the teams is like is a huge like hundred versus a hundred or something like that. Is oh it... yeah, easily. I, well, like the the servers, you, it can hold thousands. I forget how many, a couple thousand. I was just because it sounds a lot like uh, Mag or like uh, the Dust Five Fourteen. Yeah. It's just on a way larger scale. You, yeah, there, there are actually there's three continents, so there's a lot to explore too. So there's three factions fighting over the course of three continents, and you can jump on each of the three continents, and and they're pretty pretty huge. And you're just at a constant war, fighting for different bases. Oh, and, uh, so it's constant. War. It's not like you do the squad button, like you hit insert or whatever twice. It's not like you're going into a matchmaking thing, right? Where it sets up a game and you play and fight each other until no, 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 you no. Win. It's constant. It's it's a persistent like MMO world. Oh. So you just three in. teams are fighting each other. Yeah, which makes it really awesome because it gives it that MMO style, you know. Yeah. So it's going to be like a constant war over three different continents, which is going to be pretty awesome. Yeah, it, it's really exciting. And. Mm. The the server I'm on the the levels the um, population of each each faction is pretty even so there's really no one who's dominating any other. Yeah, that's, that could seem to be like a big problem. What if one place gets a lot of people and dominates? Unless they force it to be somewhat even, like you can't join after so many people. I would think they would distribute evenly, or at least try. But you always get those people who are like, you know what? I'm gonna join the squad that has one other person in it. Because yeah. I want to make a huge difference. I want to be awesome. Right. So, you know, the people purposely join the underdog and, like, sabotage everything. Like, that probably happens all the time. I mean, it is pretty cool when you, you join with a squad. Like, you, you go on a continent and it seems like... Because I see red. There's red, blue, and purple. And I see red of the, of the places that we've taken that we actually own on the continent. And so, like, safe houses for you? Huh? 
are they more so like safe houses for you or people well, they're like there's there's some like little base like every base looks different i mean well there's some similar ones that you see uh but like there's ginormous bases uh, and then there's small like little places that you can take over so like there's a lot of different points a lot of strategy to it like as like we've had like a little squad going dead like in the dead of night and you know everyone's like shut off your lights and so we roll into like this one area and we cap this place that's behind like a big base and then we go around it and cap the other one and then so we have other guys spawn there and then we all attack the big base and it's it's pretty neat because you know you're flying you're you're going down like as you're when you're a ship in the air and it's at night you can't see down at the ground very well so if they don't have their lights on it's hard to pick them out so we're all rolling in there real silent we take that base and then we go and take the other one and then we just take this massive you know uh, Mm. force and go crush the other base and that sounds like the experiences that Derek was talking about with Ultima on a whole different scale, not first person shooter and all that jazz, but yeah. it sounds like his experience that he had about like taking over huge castles and stuff and coming in by boat or by plane or whatever, you know, by air. Yeah. Like I wanted the other day, uh I hadn't like slept at all before work and I was like, I'm just gonna play like thirty minutes to try it out. I ended up playing like five hours. Just like not even realizing what time it was. That's pretty crazy like, being by yourself. I know, I'm not playing. like I'm the type of person I don't play multiplayer like at all unless I have friends playing. But this is a game that I will jump into and play by myself. And I think I saw that on your Facebook too. It's like I only wanted to play like half an hour, but here it is yeah. three hours later. Yeah, it was like three hours at that point, and then I just kept playing. <laughs> I know that that sounds really cool. But I just don't like playing with other people. So See, yeah, I don't either. But I mean it playing on a PC <clears throat> is a whole different experience. That's the only thing I can chalk it up to because people are not like I actually like I don't even like talking to other people you know on, like especially on Xbox Live but like on PC yeah, yeah. like people are nice they're helpful like I just have any question mm-hmm. ask it out and people will help you out and I mean, it's a I mean, totally different crowd it's yeah. people who Xbox don't play on PC don't understand like people who play on PC go out of their way to help or most of the time like they're they play the objective yeah, I mean, you do run across some jerks, but yeah, part, occasionally, just, right. The community is really, really helpful. Right. That's awesome. I, I wish some of those people would get on the consoles. I mean, yeah. Well, I think I think it's it's the opposite of what you just said. I think they're leaving the consoles and coming over to the PC. I think I mean, that's what's happening because they're like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm sick and tired of the twelve year olds. I'm going to the PC. And they, I, I build, and they build their own their PC. Yeah. I don't Makes think sense. it's quite as bad on PS3 because I've, I've met some cool people on PS3. When um, like when Burnout Paradise came out, I met some cool people there and that we had some good stuff going there. But other than that, mostly the 360. All, mostly all three of you playing that game. Yeah, that's that's the thing. It's like I yeah. met some cool people, but there was like four of them. Right. Well, they like that was it. Game with friends. <laughs> Please don't leave me. You're the only one on this game right now. I know. That's because yeah, all the little kids are getting consoles and stuff for Christmas. Most little kids don't get PCs for Christmas. You know, like parents aren't going to be like, oh, here's a brand new computer. It's a lot easier to go out and buy a 360 or whatever in some yeah, games. I was playing Black Ops earlier, and this little kid, he was like level three, first prestige, right? So he just got the game. He's like, all right, guys. We're going to go capture this flag. We're going to go right up through the middle, and we're going to go get them. And then this older guy was like, yo, little bro, that's a bad idea. Come with me this way. And he, like, <laughs> took, he took this, like, six-year-old. Yeah, like, it was crazy. If that happened on the 360, he would have been like, shut the fuck up, little bear, you kid again. Yeah. But, yeah, like, like, this old dude took this little <laughs> kid, like, around the side, like, a better route. It, it was incredible. I almost, I almost cried. It was beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, and that's rare. Extremely yeah. rare. So, it's, so it seems. Yeah, it's like a father-son experience there. Yeah. Yeah. Does that bring up all your daddy issues? Yeah. My dad would just play video games with me and help me go around the other side. I alt-tabbed out of the game and pulled up a picture of my dad and just stared at it just for a while. Down. Right. But yeah, that's what I've been playing. That's it. That's all. That's it for this episode, episode twenty-seven. So, yeah, episode sixty-three of uh, Between the Pixels. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and all that information is at pixelperfectmag.com. If you have any questions, comments about any topics or the news we talked about, 
you can email us podcast at pixperfectmag.com. Uh, check out our sister podcast, sort of sister podcast, Barely Relevant at barelyrelevant.com if you like inappropriate discussions. And, uh, oh, hey, we're, uh, we're a video podcast, too. So if you only listen to us on iTunes, which most of you seem to, uh, but you want to see our beautiful faces, <laughs> then you can check us out at youtube.com slash pixelperfectmag, or if you just go to pixelperfectmag.com, it there as well. Wait a minute, you can watch, find watch your wording. Perfect Mag? Yeah, pixelperfectmag.com. That's a website. I didn't yeah. know if I said that. No, you didn't. You can try to figure out what our faces look like. Like Travis. Let's see what his face actually is. Like. Devin, Devin well, looks exactly like, like how he sounds. That's not true. A lot of people say that's not true. A lot of people say that his voice would be a little bit more male. Yeah. Um, I sound like I guess I sound like a girl. Cool bed, by the way. My girlfriend bought me a Nexus 7 for Christmas. Wow, bad decision. You serious right now? <laughs> she should have got you a Wii U. I thought you won one. <laughs> we could have played together. <laughs> oh, wait. What are you going to oh, do with wait. the Nexus 7 that you can't do with a Wii? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <Everything. laughs> uh, what about Smart Glass? Hmm? Yeah. What about Smart there Glass? There you go. <laughs> Huge selling point. Zipper up. Zipper down. Zipper up, zipper down. Zipper halfway. Up, zipper down. Oh. Halfway. Is it? Zipper up, zipper down. They don't go down the whole way? No. I would say down. Uh, shirt on or shirt off? I can't do that oh, really fast. I off. Take my, under sh take my shirt off and just have my <laughs> chest hair showing. <laughs> Sexy. Chase doesn't have chest hair. Have what no are you, 12? Yeah. Pretty much. How old are you, Chase? 25. 25. I don't Holy that. crap. Am I the baby? Yeah. You don't know how old I am, Chase. You're yeah. 23. How's this? How's this look? Does it look like I'm wearing a, <laughs> a scarf? Scarf. <laughs> <laughs> here. Okay, now you have to find the right voice to talk. It's called Gillette. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm leaving. Sexy. How's that? I might talk. That'll come Jared, up. Jared, I might actually have more than you. You, uh, you probably do. I trim mine down usually, but I haven't trimmed it for a while. This is this is how I am for a no shave November. Uh, <laughs> I didn't shave it all in November. Everyone, show your chest hair. Don't be weird. <laughs> yeah, don't be weird because I'm the only one doing it. Oh god, this is about to be. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> Mine's a little more wild than. Mine's longer, but... What are you yeah, guys? Was... Bears? Look how long this is. I bet you I have more butt hair than you. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I, just hit, I just hit my record button real quick. I could, like, poop on a rocket and still be comfortable. <laughs> all right. Because <laughs> of, <all> the... <laughs> of all the hair, you know. <laughs>